Okie dokie. So I'm Sarah Grace, as I said, I'm our 2020 board president. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. It's my job to tell you a little bit about um, what Impact 100 is and what our mission is. So um, Impact 100 empowers women to dramatically improve the lives, or lives of our community by collectively funding significant grants that make a lasting impact. And the way that works, which many of you are members, uh, you know this, but women join at either a $500 or a $1,000 level. Then what we do is we pool all of those monies together to make at least $100,000 grants. And then um, during that time that we're fundraising, we're also asking our local nonprofits to submit a grant application in one of our five focus areas, which are family, health and wellness, education, culture, and then environment, recreation, and preservation. So it's a pretty well-rounded view of the nonprofit landscape. So then once those are submitted, our members come together and review the grant applications. They perform financial analysis. They do site visits, which apparently there's one today at 1.30. Um, and ultimately, our members are the ones who select our grant finalists. And then in September at our annual award celebration, the finalists present their transformational project and our members vote live for who will receive the grants for the year. Um, and we partner with those, those are, not, those are long term uh, grants, they're between one and three years for the projects. So um, we've been around since 2001 and since 2001 we've awarded over $5 million uh, to local nonprofits for a total of 47 transformational projects of at least $100,000 which is pretty amazing. And um, next year will be our 20th year. And we're hoping to be able to grant out five grants. So one for each of our focus areas. Um, for me, there are lots of things that make Impact 100 special, but I wanna share the three things that I think make M Impact 100 so special in our community. Um, one, 100% of the member dollars go to our grant pool. So there are no, um, we're not asking, we're not doing a membership fee, not a, a, every single cent you give to Impact 100 in your membership goes to our grants. Two, our members can be uninvolved or as involved as they wanna be. You can just write your check or submit your online payment and just you know trust the process and your 540 fellow members. Or you could be president if you want to be that involved. I mean, you can run the gamut, right? And then um, lastly, it's 100% volunteer working board. We have no paid staff. And I have never seen a more, uh, more high-functioning board, and it's made a, a true impact on my life. Um, and then really, before we move on and I introduce Cal, I want to um, thank our sponsors. So with 100% of our member dollars going to our grant pool, we couldn't do this work without the generosity of our sponsors. And we have a ton of them this year and we're so thankful for them. And I just want to take a moment to recognize them. Um, and they're up on your screen. So with that, that's my little spiel. Um, we have with us today, Cal Cullen, who's the executive director of Wave Pool. She's going to help, uh, or she's going to share with us what their project with Impact 100 was, as well as kind of what is happening to their um, organization and their community amid the COVID-19 pandemic. So welcome, Cal. Hi, thank you so much. <laughs> happy, to, happy to be in this Zoom meeting, finally, um, with technical issues, but we're here. Um, yeah, so I run Wavepool. Wavepool is a contemporary art center that focuses on community development and collaborative projects with community. So our mission is um, pairing communities' needs with artists' sense of possibility. So we do lots of different uh, projects, um, like from a wood shop and a gallery to um, things like a bookstore and the Welcome Project, which is a lot of cooking and um, ceramics classes all kinds of things um, and really we're able to be this flexible because we use artists as the starting point for everything we do um, and kind of framing all projects as as an artwork unto themselves so um, for the impact 100 uh, grant we were able to expand the welcome project so for those of you who don't know uh, the welcome project is an initiative that started in 2016 um, as a collaboration with Heartfelt Tidbits, um, who's a refugee service provider. And it very, it started as a weekly art class uh, with a group of women, mostly Bhutanese, and it really expanded into um, 
a lot of friendships and language development, as well as real work opportunities for these uh, crafts people and artists to um, commission works and to sell pieces and to even teach classes um, to our broader community. And so for Impact 100, we really, they're also very good chefs and we really wanted to expand the program beyond crafts and making into um, a market and kitchen. Camp, Camp Washington, which is where we're located and where most of our projects happen, is a food desert or was a food desert. <laughs> um, and uh, lacks availability to get um, fresh produce. And, uh, and there's just a lot of need here. We have a pretty low, um, uh, pretty low income rate per household, 27,000, and a lot of folks don't have transportation. So we're looking to address both of those needs, the needs of the immigrant and refugee women that we work with to teach and to um, highlight their stories through food and cooking um, and to give them employment and empowerment, but also to um, offer our community a, way, a place and a way to connect and, um, and build our, our community and culture here while providing fresh food access. <laughs> so um, I'll share with you, I've got a few images and I'm sitting in the new um, Welcome Project teaching kitchen and market right now, uh, which is just such a beautiful space. Um, and it is really the only space that we've been able to keep open through this crisis because it's a market. And, um, and I'll talk more about like what we've been doing um, during this time. So, um, oh, can you allow me to show, to share my screen? Thank you. <laughs> um, so your the, co so you should be able oh, to now. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. All right, let's see. Um, it should just this is it, I think. Oh wait, now it's asking me to allow Zoom to share. Sorry, this is not my computer either. So I'm. <laughs> there we go. Um, so it is. Oh, maybe I won't be able to show images. I'm sorry. It's telling me I have to quit it and then come back. Oh wait, I think it will, let's see. All right, can you see that? Great, so um, this is where I'm sitting in, we actually added two more benches since this picture was taken. So I'm sitting in one of the benches right now and the artist Radha Lakshmi, who's also an immigrant from India, designed um, this like front seating area in kind of like an Indian tea style um, uh, way and um, so our vision is to be able to host tea ceremonies and offer tea um, and have a sitting area. This space opened February 29th. <laughs> so we only had like a couple, two weeks um, to activate the space before, uh, before we, you know, before everything shut down. Um, here's another view of the space. Um, we were able to get the People's Liberty, a yellow table, if you're familiar, the Ralph B. Hale table for the space, which is just perfect. And our, uh, we hope to offer cooking classes on that table, as well as have it be a space for eating and conversing. Um, it's, it's just a really lovely place to be. So, <laughs> um, so during COVID-19, because we are a market and um, we sell goods, but we also have a relationship with the farm, um, and Free Store Food Bank to do free food and pay what you can produce from the farm. Um, we have really transitioned into a pop-up food pantry. Um, and we have been since, I think our first delivery was March 21st. Um, right after the lockdown happened, we put flyers over, all over our neighborhood on every house saying, uh, if you can't get out of the house, if you're high risk or you're you know, vulnerable for whatever reason, we will deliver you a box of groceries free of charge, along with an art piece. So, um, so we've been doing that. Um, this image was taken. We we have a partnership with the community action agency um, who runs the Head Start down the street, which is um, has the highest immigrant population of any Head Start in Cincinnati. Um, and we've been every second Tuesday, we have a uh, produce pop up with them. So the National Guard came, we had Steve Shabbat here last week. It's been crazy. This is an image of the boxes. We've been doing over 100 boxes per week. 
Um, about 70 of them are delivered and the other three are um, picked up. And as I said, each one includes um, a little note as well as a piece of art by a local artist um, that changes every week. Um, and we're paying, we're lucky to, to pay the artists for their work through donations we get for these boxes. We're doing a sponsorship system. Um, there's one of the artists, Lorena, with her piece. Um, and this is during the, um, so you can see how full this space gets <laughs> very quickly. This is during our produce pop-up last month with um, CAA and the Free Store Food Bank. Um, and it's, it's crazy. We, we've, all, we've been doing these produce pop-ups since um, January. And um, January and February, we were serving about 75 families uh, a day. Because since the crisis hit in March and April, we've um, actually, no, March was about, also about 75 because that was before the crisis. In April and May, it's been about 400 families per day. And we have them, the cars line up on Coleraine. It's a spectacle and, um, and really amazing. Like so many volunteers come and help and it's, um, it's just sense, such a like, sense of purpose and um, we feel really lucky to have this space built out, um, thanks to Impact 100, to be able to uh, pivot our mission and make this kind of impact uh, happen during this really critical time. Um, so uh, I wanted to also touch on some other things that we've been doing since the crisis. We um, expanded our wood shop and we've been working on building out a community tool library um, so the wood shop, when we reopen, which hopefully will be uh, in a few weeks, um, is triple its size, and we're looking forward to offering classes and professional development, um, job, job training through that again. Um, we've also been doing uh, seven social connection projects. One is a mobile uh, light show that's been traveling around neighborhoods called Projection Connections. Um, on, these really vary. Um, another is a um, flock of roving flamingos. <laughs> um, that There's a hundred flamingos that have been going house to house every few days. There's a, there's a community sign project. Um, there's, I mean, there's a couple Zoom, like, uh, weekly Zoom conversations that are part of the project. Um, it's been a lot of things happening through that. Our gallery exhibition um, that opened March 13th um, has not really been seen at all, which is uh, pretty tragic for the artist who's worked for a year on this, you know, these works. However, um, much, you know, unbeknownst to us at the time that we did this, planned this project, um, although most of our gallery shows also have a community component, and this one did as well, and the component lined up perfectly with, um, with the shutdown and with us needing to be out in our community beautifying things more than ever. So um, part of Mark Harris's show is he planted 2,000 tulips in our neighborhood, um, and they spell words. So this one, I know it's hard to read. This one says in human colors. And then the other one in Valley Park spells clouds gold, which I just think is so poignant. Um, there's another image of the tulips. And uh, they're not around anymore, but they really were like a much needed oasis in the middle of all this um, back in April. Um, and then another thing that we've started to do um, with the welcome market uh, as we are transitioning, hoping, hoping to um, be able to, to transition into more of a regular market and less of a food pantry as things start to open up. Um, we've started a, a, a series of frozen dinners and this is very new. Um, they, it's just like a couple weeks ago <laughs> that this all um, started going for sale. Um, we are partnering with Dean's Mediterranean and um, working with uh, women immigrant chefs throughout the city, mostly home chefs. Um, and these are for sale both at Welcome as well as at Dean's. And so we're able to pay these chefs. And we had an artist, um, they're called the Collection Collective Action Studio. They're based out of California, but I've worked with them several times in the past. They designed the boxes and on the back is a story about the chef and a map of where they're from and where they've traveled. This is Aziza's biryani, which is 
so delicious. We keep selling out. Like I, I'm actually looking into getting a larger commercial uh, kitchen space rental um, and scaling this project because we just cannot keep them on the shelves. Um, and this is the next one, which should be available at the end of next week, um, which is a uh, braised chicken with uh, fat rice, very rich rice um, by Manzara, who's from the Ivory Coast. Um, so that's kind of the crux of what I have to share, but I would love to continue the conversation and, um, and see you know, what questions you all have, because I'm sure there's, there's a lot. <laughs> um, and there's more things that we're doing, but I feel like it gets overwhelming um, to just, yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll stop there and maybe open up the conversation. So Cal, I'll, I'd like to start. Um, I have a question. What exactly did the impact dollars um, pay for? Was that the kitchen? Was... Yeah, so I can actually, I'll show you because I'm in this space. So um, before Impact 100, um, we had this storefront right here, um, which is about 750 square feet. And we offer ceramics classes, art classes in this space. And we sell um, goods that are made by local artists. Here's a few more. This is Erica, <laughs> who's our manager. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we make, we, you know, we sell goods that are made by local immigrant artists. Um, the impact dollars have like broke down this wall, <laughs> expanded into an entire new storefront um, that has turned into a market um, and at the time at the moment a food pantry um, where we're able able to provide residents uh, in Camp Washington and beyond with food access as well as this kitchen kitchen um, which is where we're um, we haven't we've done cooking demos and there's actually some videos we've done in this time of online cooking classes but we're hoping to offer in-person cooking classes in the future so um, so yeah, the impact dollars went towards the entire build out of the space, as well as the hiring of Erica. Before Impact 100, we didn't have dedicated a dedicated staff member to manage and run uh, the Welcome Project. Sorry, some kids are here. <laughs> um, and so uh, the impact dollars have given us a staff person, and we're um, we're kind of coming to an end of the impact dollars, but we're, that's why we're doing things like the frozen meals to become self-sustaining. Yeah. So. I, Hi, Cal. I, <clears throat> Hi, Cal. It's Kathy Thornton. Nice to Hi, see you. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. So first of all, um, just congratulations. I mean, you, incredible pivots, <laughs> beautiful space. Um, you know, it, it's it's so wonderful to be on this journey and to see the things that you have done. I mean, just it's just really incredibly awesome. Um, so my questions about are about um, the uh, meals that you're delivering or having available for your neighbors. Yep. Um, how we can support that, and as you begin to ramp up the um, frozen meals, you know, is that something to have to um, you know, like pre-order somewhere or what's what's the best methodology and how can we get the word out for you? Yeah, awesome. So um, if you go to wavepoolgallery.org, there's a link at the top of our page that's about the camp delivery service. That's what we're calling the, the grocery delivery, um, camp delivery. And we, you can sign up if you're interested in receiving a box and in the area, or um, you can sponsor a box. And we ask for $20 per box, and some people give that, some people give a lot more. Um, so that's, that's one way to support that, make sure we can pay the artists. We're also paying um, immigrant chefs to pre-cook meals that go in those boxes as well. So Manzara will be here later today. Um, cooking. Uh, I think she's making a dessert for this week, which is kind of, usually she makes a soup or something, but um, yeah, so that's one way. And then the frozen dinners, um, we have a, a, on our shop at uh, wavepoolgallery.org backslash shop. Um, you can pre-order and that's the, that's the best way um, just because we're, 
I, we're only able to make about 50 per week and it's, um, we just can't keep up. But that's a good problem to have and uh, we're talking to Finley Kitchen about how to scale and figuring that out, so mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, and one follow-up question. Are you still um, commissioning and or and selling artists things out of your yes. store? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And um, not very many of them are available online, which is unfortunate, but we're working on transitioning most things to be available online just because in-person shopping is, you know, not something necessarily people want to be doing, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Cal, I had a question. You, you talked about how you went from serving 75 families to 400. <laughs> like, and that, I mean, in a matter of like weeks, how has that impacted you and your, your team? And like, can you kind of share some experience with that? Yeah, I mean, it's been, um, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> it's been, you know, like, I don't know how else to put it. We've all had to stay super flexible. And um, I mean, I have to say like, all the, we don't have a ton of staff at Wave Bowl. We're a staff of five, um, but every person has just been so up for the challenge and eager to help and be a part of this. And um, it's been amazing. And, and not to mention like all the volunteer support we've gotten. A lot of the people in the neighborhood, um, even if they're not, they may not want a box or need a box delivered to them, but they, they're like, I want to volunteer and they come pick up boxes to deliver. And, um, it's pretty amazing. We do our deliveries on Saturdays and the transition in just a couple hours from having this entire space filled with boxes of food to, you know, like two hours later, it's all gone. <laughs> it's just like really every week. I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the CAA uh, Community Action Agency and the Free Store have been so, so needed and so helpful. We could not do it without them as partners. Yeah. Great, and we've got a question. Um, just what are the operating hours of the shop? Yeah, um, so it, we're open 11 to 6, um, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday right now, yeah. Cal, since you're there on kind of the front lines, I'm just curious, what else are you hearing? What are you hearing from the community as far as mentality, needs, besides food and, you know, sense of belonging? Is there anything else that you could, you know, tell us about that you're hearing out there? Yeah, so um, there's kind of two, well, there's a few different parts, right? There's the artist community, there's the immigrant community, and then there's the Camp Washington community. Um, the Camp Washington community, um, I, I feel like they're starting to get over the initial struggle. Initially, it really was like, I need rent paid, I need food, um, I need support because it, but now unemployment is starting to catch up and people are getting on SNAP benefits and um, it's starting to slow down a little bit. Um, for the artist community, um, artists are really struggling. I mean, they're out of jobs. We, we offer an artist professional development program and uh, the past two weeks, it's been over capacity. We've, we've sold out and then some because, and every artist is just like, well, we don't know what to do. Like I, I just graduated school. I'm entering an economy where there was, wasn't a job for an artist to begin with and trying to figure it out. Um, but they're so generous. I mean, they're the people that come and help, you know? So, um, and then as far as the immigrant community, they're struggling with, I mean, a lot of them can't get unemployment um, because of their citizenship status. Um, a lot of them are, are struggling with uh, language interpretation or knowing how to um, like get to a school site. They may not have transportation to, to get the resources that are available at schools. So, um, there's luckily a, a large contingent of nonprofits that are on these weekly calls with Greg Landsman, um, and we've been kind of tackling them as a team. Uh, but yeah, a, it's, there's a lot of needs in the immigrant and refugee community, um, not just food delivery, but, but rent and um, a lot of the barriers that come up with having kids during this time too, as far as like schooling and um, not being able to like access the internet or have a computer at home. So, yeah. Oops. 
I'll, I'll, I'll go again. Okay. <laughs> um, do you think that most of the programs that you've kind of, you know, quickly implemented during this time of crisis will continue in the future? That's a good question. I, we're looking at hoping to be able to stop the delivery for most people of the groceries within a few weeks, um, but still offer the boxes for pickup um, as hopefully things are safer. I don't, I don't know, but we're ready to re-implement it if need be as well, or to just go to those that, that opt in that say, I really need it delivered. I can't, I can't um, get there. Um, I would say uh, the produce pop-up we're doing with the free store and CAA will continue. Yeah, that, I, I don't see why we would stop doing that program. It's been needed and really helpful. Um, and the frozen foods, absolutely, we're hoping to continue. Um, and a lot of the online um, programs that we've started, the discussions and things, um, it's built some interesting relationships. Our, our um, artist professional development program um, originally was intended just for local artists. And we've had, because it's transitioned online, we've had artists from California and Philly and Pittsburgh and all over join and take the class. And there's something kind of great about that. So we may choose to continue to offer some of them online. I still think it's better to meet in person, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We're kind of playing it by ear. I have a question. I was on the committee, then we did the site visit a few years ago before yeah. your um, grant was awarded. So it's nice to see you again. But my husband and I, before the before this all, everything shut down, we discovered a coffee shop down on the other end of um, of Hopple, I guess, or, you know, on the other side of Hopple Street, down yep. on Colbert. So anyway, in the, the morning that we stopped there for coffee, there was a beautiful book of community dinners that had been going on. Yep. And I just wanted to know how Wavepool is involved in those. Uh, those are our dinners. Yeah, that's our book. <laughs> it's a beautiful book. I Thank it's, you. It's so that's a, that's a good, uh, actually, I didn't address the Cincinnati's Table dinners, but um, we've been doing the since Cincinnati's Table is a series of monthly dinners in different communities around the city. Um, and we've been doing them since fall of 18, I think. Um, and so, uh, and we made that book as a result of our first year of dinners um, with recipes and stories. So those, um, with, this, with this happening, our original intention was be able to offer them in the space. And we actually did offer one in January in the space, even though it was still under construction. And I think a couple Impact 100 people were at the dinner actually. Um, it was kind of a funny like hard hat dinner. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but we made it work. But for, for the March dinner, we offered um, a virtual dinner, which was kind of interesting between an artist and a chef um, in this space, uh, which is kind of, it was, it was a good, uh, it was a good program, but different because we can't gather around a table. Um, and then we've transitioned into these um, meals that are being put in the boxes and that's kind of how we've been viewing Cincinnati's table at least during these months is having the chefs cook dinners that go in the grocery boxes as a way to help connect um, Camp Washington but um, we usually like last year we did the Refugee Connect um, uh, World Cup we served like a thousand refugees at that um, at that soccer tournament they do every year. And I just got word that it's, it, they're gonna do like a virtual, um, just video sharing between refugees and not do the soccer or dinner, you know, this year at all. So we'll see when we can offer another Cincinnati's Table Dinner. It's a, it's a great program. Yeah, and do you find out about those on the website, I guess? Well, so most of them are neighborhood specific. So when we go to Northside, we find ways to just reach Northside people. Or when we go to Price Hill, we, try, we usually use flyers or people like the CDCs in the neighborhood have an email list for neighbors um, because it really is supposed to be a way to connect neighbors. Um, but we're hoping that as 
more of them happen in this space, it can extend to open to anyone. The one in January was open to anyone. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I just want to just want to pipe in and um, say what a fantastic job you've been doing. I was at the um, I was over there. Like it's been a few years, definitely before the build out and everything. But I've been to a couple of the Cincinnati Tables dinners, and they're fantastic. I was registered for the one in March that so that got canceled. Oh, so sad. <laughs> it is. It's disappointing. But what can you do? Yeah. Um, I went to one at the CAC. A year or so ago where Manzana cooked, yep. he made the most amazing peanut soup. I've not been able to replicate it. So if you could encourage her to make that for sale. <laughs> yeah, that maybe I'll have to do an online cooking class or that's a good, it is a really good peanut soup. <laughs> I loved it. I've, been, I've made a few since then, but nothing's come, nothing's that good. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. And then Cal, we have a quick question okay. from Kathy. Um, going forward, what kind of volunteers might you need and use? So we can always use um, volunteers for kind of a variety of things. We have a garden down the street that always needs help. Our backyard is a constant work in pro pro progress process. Um, we right now we need help delivering food boxes and packing them, um, picking up food from free store or from like right now I have two volunteers picking it up from Master Provisions. That's always um, helpful. Really, wh whatever your skill set is, I will find a job for you. <laughs> um, I had someone reach out to me recently offering to um, put our items online so we can have a more fleshed out online store. That's going to be amazing. Um, so, and I'm sure, you know, photographing those items would be a, a great volunteer job. So, so yeah, I would say reach out to me, whatever, whatever you want to do, I'll find a way to use it. <laughs> Hi, Cal, it's Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Um, I was at the January dinner and what was so wonderful was the sense of community. So it was, it was a great experience. And I am very, very interested in that frozen dinner. Do we, you said we can order those online? Yep. And then do we pick them up at Wavepool or something? Okay. At Welcome Project. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we're, they're cooking another batch of the biryani today. And then they're cooking the first batch of the chicken on Monday. So we should have more in stock tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because I'm definitely interested in the biryani. That just sounds wonderful. So great. Um, but to volunteer, do we just reach out to you or is there yeah. something you need to fill out something online or anything? So, um, if you can email, uh, welcome project Cincinnati at gmail.com. Uh, if you just want to volunteer, focus on the welcome project and Erica will be in touch. Um, if you're more flexible and want to help with the tool bank or whatever else we have going on, uh, you can email wavepoolgallery at gmail.com. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope to see you soon. Thanks. Anyone else? Well, I just want to say, you know, your work is awe inspiring. I mean, I think we're all just energized. We want to volunteer. We want to, and we want to share your story. So thank you so much. Um, thank you. I mean, it's, it's, I can't even amazing. tell you how impactful Impact 100 has been for our organization. <laughs> I mean, we would not be able to serve, our, our community has been asking for fresh food access since we started five and a half years ago. And to be able to provide it is just, people are so thankful. I mean, I get emails and Instagram posts and like some of the voicemails I've received have just brought me to tears. And really it would not, it would not be possible without, without you guys. So I can't, I can't thank you enough. <laughs> well, I think this has been an amazing webinar. I mean, just amazing. So really thank you for sharing your story. And we want to thank everyone, um, you know, for joining us today. 
Um, yes, we, thank, you so, thank you so much, Cal, for taking time out yeah. of your day to, you know, spend with us. Um, we really appreciate it. Maybe you can join us for another one. <laughs> Absolutely. We get, requests, we get requests from you all the time for you to come to our <laughs> event. Oh, yeah, time. anytime. I'm, I'm game. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, since we're recording, I'm going to make a, you know, a, a kind of an abrupt transition here. Um, again, this is, our, our, you know, for our recording um, purposes and that um, if anyone is watching that um, is not familiar with Impact 100, um, we do have some other events coming up. Um, obviously, next Thursday, we'll be with um, Self again. And we have a, uh, I guess that's next Friday. We have a happy hour, it's called Empowered Girl Talk. That's part of our DEI, um, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion um, chair with Deepika that will be hosting that. Um, so if you have anyone that you know that, um, women of color that wanna get involved in the nonprofit community and with Impact 100, please invite them. Um, and then one other uh, uh, series that we're doing is called our Step Up Series. And uh, Claire uh, Zlatik Blankemeyer will be hosting those. And she's gonna be exploring some of the steps throughout Cincinnati with our uh, nonprofits. If you have any questions about any of that kind of stuff, please go to our, um, our website, which is listed below. Wavepool's in, uh, website is listed there as well. So you can get any of that info. And finally, if there's anyone watching that is not a member, just want to make a quick plug that um, you can become a member at any time. Um, we have full and half membership um, levels that equate to a one or a half vote. Um, and you, we get to live vote and decide uh, who these amazing grants go to. Obviously, we have plenty of different ways that you could pay. Um, you could start paying monthly now and, um, get paid up by December 31st, which is when all membership dollars are due. Um, does anyone on the call have any other questions? I would love for, and if anyone has time, I would love for you guys to stay a little bit um, and provide feedback once we're done recording. But does anyone have any other questions right now? Awesome, well, um, We'll, we'll in, uh, kind of sign off. If you can stay, would love, again, would love for you to hang out for a minute. Stacy, it's Janet. I, I thought of a question. I'm sorry. Is there any update yet of um, how we might be approaching the September banquet, or is it too soon to know, or you don't want to share yet? That's okay. Sarah Grace. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we are exploring a few options we were we've been in connection with music hall just discussing what it might look like to do a socially distant uh event granted we're still at no more than 10 people in a gathering right so the fact thinking in september that we could have unless someone gets married yeah we could have a wedding reception slash <laughs> banquet with 300 now i believe after june 1st yeah so we're so we're working on that but most likely what we're what we're really looking for especially since um it costs lots of money to put on a live thing and we are looking most likely at doing a virtual event with potentially like a very small like maybe the finalists are all together doing their presentations live something like that um or we're also looking at maybe other venues that might we could just do that would be um, more inexpensive and we could kind of just do the presentations and and you know still come together but but because I have no idea how anybody's gonna eat a plated dinner with a mask on so right, um, right. but we've got a subcommittee working on it we're actually meeting today right. uh, this afternoon just kind of going through our options feeling into it and uh, but we do have July 17th save the date is for meet the finalists it'll be a virtual event but um, we've got a nice little committee working on that too, to make sure that it, it is as interactive and powerful as it, it usually is. So great. Oh, thank you. And Jane, I had done for the some of the calls. I was gonna say, I did some of the calls with the members, the check-ins over the last couple of weeks. And, um, that was a, you know, a question some people were curious mm -hmm. about. And I said, I would assume that the board is working both on a live option and, you know, 
plans B, yeah. C, etc. Yeah. So yeah, one of the options is like, can we just go to a field and everybody can bring a picnic blanket, <laughs> right? You know, I mean, you got to explore them all. So thank you. But thanks yeah, for you're asking. You're a wonderful host. You could um, host some of your friends at your house and and watch yeah. together and do a watch party. Yeah, we'll have watch parties. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Little micro micro parties. Yeah. yeah. That is definitely got another a, daughter that can get married, right? Right. <laughs> got yeah, another I daughter. Got one available. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Could you do this for us, honey? Yes. <laughs> Great. Um, well, I, and I, while I have you guys, how do you think that this went? Would Would you think we should do it differently?